Thank you, Anthony. Set now, and they're off and racing, jumping away. Kansas de Berlay, one of the first to show from Brookie in second place, Jericho de Repinay in third, and Classic Anthem, the early back marker, the first fence taken now. And all four safely over Jericho de Repinay in third place, about four to five lengths behind the front-running grey, Kansas de Berlay, who will lead them at the second fence. 13 to jump, all told. Kansas de Berlay. Oh, and Jericho de Repinay soared over that. It was like a skyrocket there. It came down almost vertically uh, and was agile enough just to find a leg or two to keep him upright. That was, um, that was an unconventional jump, to say the least. But he's still in it, Jericho de Repinay, in third place. The leader, Kansas de Berlay, from Brookie, in second place. Jericho de Repinay, third. And classic anthem at the rear end of the field. So on they go towards fence number three. Early scare for Jericho de Repinay as Kansas de Burley leads them downhill towards this next fence. Kansas de Burley from Brookie, Jericho de Repinay in third, classic anthem, the back marker. Kansas de Burley steadied into the wings of this fence. The other three group up in behind. All over safely. Brookie in second place. Jericho du Repinay in third. And in fourth place, Classic Anthem. As they turn in to the back straight. This line of seven fences in a line. Kansas du Berlay leading up from Brookie. And Jericho du Repinay in third position. A bit tentative, Jericho du Repinay. Classic Anthem closed up to within a neck of him in third place. Kansas du Berlay from Brookie. Four to five lengths, the gap between first and second. Jericho de Repinay's jumping at that previous one was much better. He's over in third place, and Classic Anthem is now three lengths behind him. On they go towards the next fence. Kansas to Berlay. Jericho de Repinay's up on the outside. First run since last year's Cheltenham Festival. On the inside, Brookie, and then comes Classic Anthem. On they head now to the first of the railway fences. Six left to take here in the Boodles Novices Limited Handicap Chase. The leader, Kansas du Berlay. The other three have closed right up, though. On the outside, Jericho de Repinay touches down alongside Brookie, and the back marker just is classic anthem. Kansas du Berlay made a mistake, and so too did Jericho de Repinay, and in turn did classic anthem no great favours. So Brookie was the only one who came out of that fence with any great credit. Meanwhile, it is Kansas du Berlay who still leads, hasn't stopped him, and Jericho is stopping quickly now. Jericho de Repinay is being pulled up, stopping very quickly before the pond fence as they now move on this long run to the third last. It's a real anticlimactic last 15 minutes, and Jericho de Repinay, we just have to hope he's OK after that blunder at the railway fences. Kansas de Burley leading up here from Brookie in second place and Classic Anthem in third. Now they turn back towards home. Kansas de Burley, Brookie and Classic Anthem with now just two more fences left to take. Brookie up on the outside takes the lead from Kansas de Burley. Being played late is Classic Anthem who goes off in pursuit of Brookie. Looks as though Kansas de Burley is quickly beaten. They've got one more fence left to take. Brookie out in front from Classic Anthem. Brookie, the narrow leader, jumped the last well. So too did Classic Anthem. There's a gap of a length and a half between them. Brookie, uphill towards the line. Classic Anthem trying to get their stand side. 50 metres left to go. Brookie from Classic Anthem. Brookie lasted home. Now that was obviously going on at Tenace. We had a bit of drama with that delay with Jericho de Repinay, um, not with the field for some time. There was a 10 minute delay and ultimately he didn't jump particularly well. Um, let's see if we can get some more news on that with Anthony. Uh, dramatic scenes here at Soundan. Jericho de Repinay pulled up on his first start. Um, Nicky Henderson joins me now. Obviously, extremely disappointing for all concerned, not least you. Just take me back to pre-race. What, what exactly happened there? Well, that was strange. I mean, like, very strange. In that this is the... You know, he, he's got a wonderful temperament. Uh, to saddle today, it was like... You thought we were trying to break in a lion. It was crazy, and I haven't, you know, that was totally out of character. We then had to re-saddle him back, we had to take him back up into the saddling boxes, and 
He just was, but the vet looked at him and listened to him and everything, checked again at the start. Oh, I said, Nick, if you're not happy when you get down there. And it totally, as soon as you got on him, no problems. I mean, just back to normal. Everything was normal. Um, and we said, right, I, you know, he's good to go. And I walked the ground as well. We were happy with that. Everything was good apart from pre sadly. Then I've got to say the first ditch was... Altior used to do that at that ditch every time. I mean, it's just one of those things. They see ditches at home. It's probably a bigger white rail than they've seen. And it's, oh, help, what do I do here? And then, consequently, you get that enormous great balloon, which is going to be quite clever to survive. And then, like I said, he, was, he started to warm back up. He was warming up, warming up, warming up, all the way down the back, and started to get the jumping and going. So he got to the last of the railways, and he said, honestly, you'll need to see it to believe it. He just slipped from yards out straight into the fence and quite rightly in my opinion he pulled him up there was no point in you can't take a chance with the horse but he wasn't going to win at that point anyway he was unhappy that would have just confidence by then had had two serious shocks and it wasn't ready for another one and he he's a very very good horse I really seriously believed he'd count around today and we'd be talking about coming back here for the Henry the whatever um, don't think we'll do that for the time being. We've just got to go and regroup. And, you know, he's done everything right at home. He schooled beautifully, had a gallop at Newbury, fantastic. He's done absolutely nothing wrong at all. He's jumped beautifully the whole way through. But there you go. I mean, we're, we can always get surprised and fooled, and I'm afraid he's done that to us today in every sense. Is the horse OK physically? Yes, 100%. Okay. Yeah. 100%. I bet he will get checked out again now. But he's put, Nick has said, no, there's no, he's, he's pulled up completely sound. Um, and hearts are normal and all that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, I just think it's a, it's a bizarre chapter of circumstances that have contributed to, look, I'm sorry, but I tell you, nobody's more disappointed than our team is going to be. And it's just, you know, we have to live with these things and we have to learn to accept them and we've got to correct them. That's our job, and we will. Best of luck with it. Thank you. Thank you. It's as if we've been gone forever, but soon it'll feel like we've never been away.